what the Rolex Fastlane is all about. My uh, first race was in a Sigma 36 and it took us over seven days. All clear. So that's the start of uh, IRC 4 with the 87 boats. We're just alongside a very famous boat, I believe. Uh, I think it's Battle Cry, uh, 1178. Zara's had a good start as uh, well, a, a Swan 38, 126, closer to the squadron. It's With... interesting that a lot of the fleet, has, uh, or the bulk of the fleet, I should say, has chosen to start down your end, Simon, down towards the squadron. And I'm not surprised in many ways to see that because the tide is running faster to the west and these boats are much slower, of course, than the boats that we've been watching earlier on. Yeah, Zara's got a, a white spinnaker, got a, a turquoise spinnaker of a French uh, 288, I think it is. They've had uh, a nice start as well. That's uh, Menusier Fenetra, I think, and that's an X332 with the turquoise spinnaker closer to the green. There's a white spinnaker ahead of that, but that's in the uh, leading bunch here. I think we're, meanwhile, we're out on that far end and we're alongside, and I'm pretty sure, or I'll be corrected if I'm wrong, pretty sure that's Battle Cry 1178. If it is, it uh, was an old Admiral's Cut boat from way back, beautiful old wooden, wooden boat. And Louis, who have you got? Um, I've got to say, Matt, you are spot on, and that was Battle Cry. She was uh, a uh, South African Admiral's Cupper. She's a Sparkman Stephen 41. She's now called Easy Glider. And, and Oliver Hughes uh, went down to Cape Town and sailed the via Rio back here and restored her. So you're spot on, Matt. It's called Easy Glider now. Oh, though. good. I'm glad about that. I was getting nervous for a while because <laughs> the name's not on the stern. But it's a beautiful boat. And anyway, that boat was from the uh, 70s when the Admiral's Cup was still running. And uh, she would have done the fast net many times because that was the long offshore race in those days. Um, going from one extreme there, we've then got um, quite, uh, we'll just move ourselves across, but we've got quite a few of the uh, JPKs and uh, no doubt, Louis, you could pick out a few of the key ones there because the JPK range of boats has proved itself to be really very successful, particularly in offshore sailing, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, uh, Matt. Uh, you know, in IRC4 we have some of the smaller uh, JPKs, the JPK 10.10, .10, um, probably the pickout we've already mentioned, Noel Racine, Foggy Jew. Uh, we also got um, uh, Gioa and Emman Emmanuel Pinto, and that is actually the night and day that won the Fastnet overall in 2013, and uh, it, you know under a new name and new owner, Emmanuel Pinto. Uh, Mary Francois Morisot. He won the uh, uh, the class in the St. Marlowe race this year, but you're right. These uh, these uh, designs by Jean-Paul uh, Kelbert um, are doing extremely well. A lot more in the next class as well uh, in IRC3. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, it's going to be um, uh, a cracking. I mean, as you alluded to, we've got such a range of boats uh, in this class. We have everything from. Six Sigmas, Vintage Swans, to these uh, small pocket rockets and JPK. It's uh, it really is um, uh, a, uh, a a fantastic sight. I could hear I could hear Alex uh, <laughs> saying it's beautiful. Go on, Alex. Well, you said Vintage Swan. I'm looking here at Golden Fleece, and uh, she's a bit stuck here with uh, not a lot of breeze, but. What a stunning looking boat. And then to the left of her, we've got a Bowman 44, just to reinforce this sort of variety of contrasting boats that we have here. The Bowman 44 Scardi, which is Mike Greville's boat. Mike Greville for many, I mean, this is his, I think it's his 15th fast net. And uh, he's had many uh, Grand Prix race boats over the years. And now he's got this beautifully restored Bowman 44. And I was talking to a couple of the crew last night actually about it, saying you're going to have a comfortable time. And all they could talk about was the size of the oven and the size of the roast leg of lamb that they were taking <laughs> with them. Uh, just to let you know, Matt, it's actually Mike Greville's 18th fast net. He did his first one when he was 15. Good grief. Um, but he looks pretty comfortable there. The one you've been seeing with the uh, sheep on the uh, spinnaker is Golden Fleece GBR 2000 Michael Wheeler. And a great sight as these uh, yachts in class four head away from uh, cows. And this is what it's all about. This is, as we've been mentioning, the Corinthian spirit of the Rolex Fastnet race. Everyone can get involved. 
and uh, well I suppose it's a real parallel with the London Marathon you've got the elite at the very front there but everybody can get involved in this uh, marathon of the sea as they head off towards the uh, fast net rock we're gonna get some more guns and more hooters but uh, that's for a start in uh, 10 minutes time IRC for still heading away we're just alongside uh, a uh, Rogers I think it's a Rogers 30 called may contain nuts uh, 30 foot um, offshore boat and uh, that is again at the opposite end of the scale to the boats we were talking about earlier on but these little 30 footers were built for long distance uh, offshore racing and in the early days of their design back in the I think it was the 90s uh, these things charged around uh, around Britain and uh, proved that actually it didn't have to be a huge boat to be a quick boat and certainly it still looks like a pretty good boat doesn't it Alex oh, she looks, she's going well against the rest of the fleet and I mean although this is a Corinthian fleet we could see the winner the winner of the fast net could and and may well probably be if it's a small boat race one of these Corinthian crews so it's uh, it, it, it's unusual in sport full stop I think we'd never in the London Marathon see an amateur winner would we no that's very true it's very true and just I mean I know it's a complex thing but give us for those of those wondering why a small boat could possibly win and why we're talking about it being a small boat race why is that what is it about the conditions that would make it a small boat race well if, if, if the start of the race all these boats are handicapped so everyone is a bit like golf uh, it's handicapped with the physical character characteristics and you end up with a number now if the race is windy uh, windy at the start and no wind at the finish and the big boats are able to finish first and they have a huge advantage but as so often happens in these races uh, that the the the, uh, the poor can get richer ie the the wind picks up at the end and that brings this big fleet in and some of these boats are extremely competitive under IRC the handicap system that we're using here well it's certainly looking overall in this fleet after their start it, to me I don't know about you Alex but to me it looks like the boats that started closer in on the shore have had as we've been talking the benefit of that tide uh, they uh, and, and they've really sort of levered themselves ahead of the rest of the fleet I can't see anybody out at the far end in IRC 4 that has really benefited from starting at that far end because they're against more tide aren't they no oh, they've, they've got very little chance I think you you could have one or one and a half two knots of tide against you at this end and in at cows you can have one maybe two knots of tide with you and you can see these boats get shot up not with a lot of wind